In today's video, we're going to talk about the delay or skew measurement, which is a measure of the time difference between two signals. The delay and skew terms are often used interchangeably, and that's okay. But in general, the delay term is used whenever we're talking about a time difference that is intended. Maybe it's uh, the time difference between a clock and data signal for, say, a setup and hold uh, condition on a logic chip. By contrast, the skew term is often used when the time difference between two signals is not intended or not desired, such as uh, a skew between multiple lines in a parallel data bus, for example. Regardless of the term being used, uh, the measurement is typically done the same way. Uh, most often, we make the measurement at the 50% point of each of the signals, halfway up the rising edge or maybe halfway down the falling edge. When making this measurement on an analog oscilloscope, uh, you typically would uh, just simply count the number of divisions that exist on the scope screen between the two edges, and then multiply that by the time per division uh, you know, sweep speed of the scope. Uh, some analog scopes have got cursors, and you can use those to make those measurements. We'll go take a look at doing both of them now. Uh, for a test signal, I've got my function generator set up here with a uh, identical pulse occurring on channel 1 and channel 2. Except that channel 2, I've dialed in a delay of 5 nanoseconds. Now I've got equal length coax running from the signal generator to channel 1 and channel 2 here. We can see the individual pulses. And if I uh, just increase my uh, sweep speed here to about 5 nanoseconds of division, you can actually now see the difference on the leading edge of the traces. Now sometimes this is difficult to do on an analog scope because I'm triggering on a signal that's kicking off the sweep and actually trying to look at that signal as well. Most scopes have got a delay line built in so that you can actually see the edge you're triggering on. If that's not the case, what you may have to do is slow the scope down and then use your 10x magnifier and then adjust uh, to actually go look at uh, one of the pulse edges. In our case here, we've got a sufficient amount of delay line so I can see the rising edge of each channel. And so, you know, with an analog scope, you kind of have to sometimes remind yourself which trace is which, channel 1 or channel 2, because they're all the same color. So we line them up on top of each other, and uh, I've got them centered at the center gradical here. And we can actually see uh, where those two cross the center gradical. And of course, if we line up with one of the major divisions here, we can see that uh, we're essentially exactly one division away for the second signal and at 5 nanoseconds per division that matches the 5 nanosecond delay that I had dialed in on the signal generator. Now, of course if your scope has got uh, cursors we can turn those on and uh, adjust the position of those two cursors uh, to be at the crossing points of the waveform and therefore uh, make that measurement again in this case right at 5 nanoseconds. Of course, most of the time these days we're using uh, modern digital scopes and they will typically have an automatic measurement. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, so we've got those same two signals now applied to the scope. Let's uh, turn on measurements and we'll go add a measurement. And let's scroll down and find the delay measurement. And uh, we'll configure that. We said we want to measure from the uh, first rising edge of channel 1 to the first rising edge of channel 2. So we'll add that measurement in. And now we can actually see the measurement here. Uh, its mean is about 5.01 uh, nanoseconds or so, only about uh, 10 picoseconds off from what I dialed in, which is certainly uh, acceptable. And if we turn the measurement indicators on, we can see that the, by default those measurements are made at the 50% point or the crossing point uh, of each of those signals. Well, these measurements, including the automatic measurement, all work perfectly well. But what happens? if the probes that we're using to connect up to those signals or the cables that we're using to connect those signals to our scope are of different length or different delays. That's certainly going to affect our measurement. How do we separate that out? And my friend and colleague uh, Mike T reminded me of this neat little trick to separate out the probe uh, and cable skew from our actual signal skew. So let's take a look at this situation. I've got a, a delta TS, we'll call that the delta T between the signals that exist between those signals. And if we've got different lengths or different delays in the cables, we'll also have a delta TC, a delta, delta T due to the cables. So if we hook all these up, this, this signal down through to channel 1, this signal through channel 2, through these cables. When we make this measurement, the measurement is actually going to be the sum of this delay and that delay. 
That's the delay we're going to measure on the scope. Then we make a second measurement, but this time with the cable swapped, swap both ends, uh, so that now cable one is measuring, is connecting the second signal to channel two, and cable two is connecting the first signal to channel one. Now the cable delay is moved to the other signal. And this measurement then, if we work out the, the math, is going to be our original signal delay, but now the cable delay changes sign because the second signal is arriving earlier or the first signal is arriving later, just the opposite of the above case. Now with these two measurements made, it's easy to, to separate out the signal skew and the cable skew. If we simply add these two equations to themselves, we'll wind up with measurement one plus measurement two uh, equals the signal delay uh, twice, and then these two terms cancel. So we're left with measurement one plus measurement two is two times the signal delay. So if we simply take the sum of the measurements divided by two, that gives us the signal delay only. Similarly, if we subtract these two, we'll have measurement one minus measurement two uh, is equal to, well, let's see, the signal delay cancels out, and then the cable delays uh, will double up. So we're left with measurement one minus measurement two is two times our cable delay. So essentially taking the difference between the two measurements divided by two gives us the cable delay. So by simply making these two measurements with the cable swapped, we can easily separate out our original signal skew from our cable skew. Let's go take a look at it in action. So I've swapped out the matched coaxial cables with another pair of cables here. And these differ in length by about 18 inches or about 45 or 46 centimeters. And we can see that uh, our measurement one in this case is about 7.321 uh, nanoseconds. And so next we uh, will swap out uh, the cables at both ends, both here at the scope and then also here over at the signal generator. And I'll just uh, wiggle the controls here to reset my statistics on our measurement. So now our measurement number two is showing uh, 2.745, 2.745 nanoseconds. And so if we run those numbers from uh, measurement one and measurement two, uh, the sum of those measurements divided by two gives me about the five nanosecond uh, delay that I had uh, dialed into the signal generator originally. And the difference of those measurements divided by two gives me 2.288 nanoseconds which is consistent with about an 18 inch or 46 uh, centimeter difference in uh, coaxial cable length. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little look at uh, skew or delay measurements and how to employ this neat little trick to separate out the signal skew from a cable skew. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so and tell your friends. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.